I'm going to mute. Okie dokes. So thanks for joining us tonight. And um, we have just three classes leading us into the end of this year. And then we'll hopefully resume this again next year. So tonight's one is about cooking with essential oils. And then we have another one next Wednesday, which is holiday gifts and DIYs so that we can gift people little things of health and wellness instead of, you know, the more traditional cookies and, you know, same, same olds. And then we will finish up this little series on Wednesday, December 9th with spruce up your self-care so that you can also take care of yourself this year, especially as we go into winter. Okay, so class overview. Lorianne, you wanna cover that? Yes, so we're gonna share a little bit about what the Vitality Oils um, are. Um, and before, after that, we'll get into specifics on recipes, how to use them, um, both from drinking to eating to um, baking, all kinds of different ways to use it. Um, and then we'll recap and tell you what's up next. Awesome. Okay, so this piece is super important and it gets pretty confusing for people. Um, I know Laurieann has the oils and you can show them if you want, but basically we have the Vitality range, which are all the bottles that have the white label like Laurieann is showing. So this would be a Vitality range, you know, anything that has a white label. And then we have our regular oils. And the important part here is Young Living actually went to the FDA and said, you know, our oils are safe for internal use. Um, we know that there is nothing in this other than food grade, you know, it's, it's grade A therapeutic essential oil. And of course, we know that if it's something like lemon, where you can smell it, you can taste it, you can um, put it on your skin, it's safe for all three uses. Well, the FDA said, okay, we agree. The, the ones that you're stating are safe for internal use. We totally agree with you, but you cannot put three methods of use on one label. So you cannot say that this is safe for topical use, aromatic use, and internal use. And so we want you to have something different, create a new label so that people will be able to distinguish and to know. So that is why and how our vitality range was born. So the piece of it that people get kind of hung up over or get confused about is they're like, oh, well, can I only use the lemon vitality in my water? And the answer is no, you can use either lemon. So whether you have the vitality or you have the regular, because another interesting fact is that they will never ever allow the vitality label on a 15 mil bottle. That was another little rule of the FDA that they felt that if anyone on whatever crazy off chance decided to open that 15 mil and drink the whole thing, it could be pretty, you know, dangerous. So therefore they're not gonna label it that it's safe for internal use, which is, you know, kind of silly, but they have their things. And so we wanted to respect that. So bottom line is your lemon oil, whether it has the yellow label or it has the white vitality label, exact same thing. But it, this is a nice way to distinguish because you know that if you're looking for any of these um, oils to see what is safe for internal use. If it has a counterpart that comes in Vitality, then you can get whichever one you want. So if there is an oil that you love, we always say get the 15 mil size because it's better value for money. And you're gonna usually pay double the price and you're getting three times the amount since it's a 15 mil bottle versus a five. And it's usually double the price. So it's a pretty nice deal. So having said that, the Vitality range is actually divided into four categories. There is supplement, spice, citrus, and herb, or herb, sorry, an American accent there. So anyway, you can see that they actually take each one of these and they put them in these categories. So as an example, supplement use, you've got copa iba, Dajas, copa iba is kind of for inflammation, um, so many different things. We put this in our, like if there is an ulcer or any kind of issue in the mouth. Um, thanks, Lorraine, you're showing it. Yeah, it's such a good one. And um, any kind of soreness or toothache or, you know, someone just getting their wisdoms out, copa iba is fantastic for healing and it's safe to put, you know, in, in like internally. So Digest for all things digestion, such a great one. Endoflex is actually for hormone support. 
And again, really cool that it is safe for internal use. So you could make a capsule if you wanted. I prefer to use it topically, but you can have it safely internally as well. Frankincense, thieves, GLF, scl sclerescence, longevity, Juvaclens, Juvaflex. So those are all gonna be under the supplement category. Under the spice, you've got black pepper, cinnamon bark, clove, ginger, carrot seed, celery seed, dill, cardamom, coriander, nutmeg, and fennel. Under citrus, you have bergamot, citrus fresh, grapefruit, dade lemon, lemon, lime, orange, and tangerine. And then finally, your herb category, which you're gonna have basil, lemongrass, oregano, rosemary, thyme, lavender, peppermint, spearmint, Loris nobilis vitality, mountain savory, marjoram, sage, and German chamomile. And interesting to note too, is that the herb one and the spice one are very, very intense. And so a lot of the times we use very little and sometimes it's even gonna be suggested that you use a toothpick and you actually dip it into your bottle if you're making a food or a recipe, <clears throat> excuse me, because even one drop is way too much. It's really overpowering. So it's important to know how you're using it. Like even though all of these are fine to put, let's say in water to drink, I'm telling you now, I would never put a drop of oregano in my water. It would be pungent and taste terrible. Um, and you need to be very careful also with like peppermint and spearmint, they're pretty strong. So I actually learned this trick today that someone does when they said, well, oil and water don't always mix if you're drinking it in your water and I put peppermint, it actually kind of burns my lips. And so there were two suggestions for this. One is put a drop of peppermint on a cube of ice, like put it on the, the ice and then put that in your glass and then pour water. The other suggestion is put it at the bottom and then fill with water. And that way it's infusing it more. And of course, a nice tip as well is use a stainless steel straw so that it's not all sitting and bothering your lips. So those are some tips as well that we can use. Um, so that's everything on that one. That was a lot. That's the most like information piece about these vitality oils. Super helpful. I definitely feel on this whole list, like lemon and thieves after I had gotten the kit, those were the first two that I bought like the big one on, <laughs> the big ones on because they're the ones I went through the fastest. Um, and then, yeah, you were right on the copaiba. My son actually will ask for the copaiba. He just goes like this, he doesn't say copaiba, but with his teething, he'll actually point and he'll walk up to the oils and point to the copaiba. Um, so that's always a sign. Two-year-olds don't tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Uh, so lavender lemonade is one of our favorites. Um, I know in a lot of our events we were doing actually at a lavender farm. This is one of the most popular drinks that we would do um, each event that we did. Um, and it's very simple. You can uh, either you can either buy your lemonade if you wish, like an organic lemonade, and then add it. Or if you want to get um, very Martha Stewart, you can make your own um, with fresh lemons and lime um, squeezed, and then adding, of course, honey with the Vitality oil of lavender. Um, again, as Jade said. It's very potent because it's under the herb category. So if you don't want to really do more than that, always err on the side is less and then taste test and then maybe add more. Um, and they do come up quick. Uh, Jade, what is the hole? There's little holes on the ends of these oils. And when you're pouring them, <laughs> you want to make sure. Absolutely. That's another really fun tip as well. So if you're ever looking inside um, your essential oil, there's the main hole where the oil is coming out from. And there's actually on the inner perimeter there's another tiny little hole and that's kind of like an aeration hole and so if you aim that down that little dot you'd see it as a dot if you aim it down it's actually going to bring your oil out quicker if you aim it like up so it's on the opposite side when you're doing a drop it'll slow down how quickly that oil is dropping so most of these vitality oils are going to come out pretty quickly because just the nature of the plants that they're coming from. Whereas something like vetiver is gonna be a much thicker oil, even rose, rose oil actually like coagulates a bit when it's cold. So those oils need to be warmed. And the way we do that is on our own body. So you're not gonna heat it or boil it or worse, terrible, put in the microwave. We never do that. So you're gonna put it on your body part and just let it warm and then it will come out a lot quicker. Or you can use a dropper piece, you know, that's another option. Awesome. So some other recipes, truly, it's you can add it to anything. So you can put it in your 
um, in your iced tea. So you could pick what flavor of iced tea you wish. Um, I actually carry, sometimes carry these, well, not so much, I'm not going to restaurants right now, sad face, but um, you know, you can carry these in your purse, but honestly, and mix up your own bubble water at a restaurant um, if it's in a glass <laughs> or um, anywhere you're on the go. Oh, and sorry, actually, and this here, Zing and Ningxia, which we'll talk about are two um, really wonderful antioxidant blends that are unique to Young Living. Um, and they are wonderful drinks, wonderful beverages that have essential oils infused in them. And you can also add your own essential oils, particularly lime and lemon, um, are really yummy ones that mix well with the Ningxia. Jay, do you have any others that you like to mix with Ningxia? So what's so much fun is when you go to convention um, with Young Living in like, usually summertime is when we had it. Of course, this past year it was canceled, sadly, but they even have a Ningxia bar. And so instead of having like, an alcohol type bar, it's all Ningxia and they just experiment and change different essential oils that they add. So we'll do that sometimes where we do it in a shot glass. It must be glass or stainless steel. And um, that's because again, we're gonna have, you know, oils are gonna leach toxins from plastic. That's not healthy for us. So whenever we're adding essential oils, we're always using stainless steel or glass. That's super important. And we would literally, they have such fun things, like they would have the fire bomb and you add a drop of cinnamon into your Ningxia. So that's really, you know, and it's got that spicy flavor. And then there'd be like the health one and they'd put a drop of frankincense. So there's so many great ideas when you're incorporating Ningxia. My favorite drink at the moment is actually just soda water or just bubbly water. And then I use one sachet or about one ounce of Ningxia. And that is my middle of the day, like pick me up drink that I'm actually getting all the health benefits from. And then I will sometimes add a lemon or a lime or just kind of depends on my mood. So funny. I just started doing that about a week ago without you even telling me literally with my, really? <laughs> yeah, for the Pellegrino. And then I uh, put the Ningxia, just a bit of it uh, to replace coffee in the afternoon. And it's so much more um, uplifting. Effective. Totally. Uh, and you don't get that crash, which is so nice. Like, Badliness. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so on the um, on the bottle, it says not to leave it open for more than thirty days. Is that what it is, or fourteen? I can't remember. Um, do you guys ever um, have you ever used it beyond after? It's yes, been open? as long yeah. as you're refrigerating it. So I think that that's more of a shelf okay. stable um, because they're doing their best to keep it preserved without putting toxic preservatives in it. So it's just a suggestion. Um, but yeah, it's really just about, as I've kept it in the fridge and I have no issues with that. A superfood drink, it's made from wolfberry puree. It's grown in the Ningxia province in China. I believe it's actually a blue zone. And the reason that it is so incredible in terms of how it works and what it's doing for us is that those Ningxia trees are actually grown with water from the glaciers so they're very it's very very clean water and crazy high frequency in terms of its of the energy in that water and the earth is from lava rock so those two factors make it in like just a powerhouse of a superfood because yes we can get wolf berries in lots of different regions but no other place has them as high of an srx value which is basically the way that they're showing you how, how much um, of a superfood it actually is than the ones that are found in this Ningxia region in China. So it does also have essential oils infused in there and they're orange, yuzu, lemon, and tangerine. And it's got 93% D-limonene, which is a powerful antioxidant and it's a marker for bioactivity. So it really helps maintain the body's like normal cellular function. Um, yeah, so that one, if anyone ever says to me, oh, I suffer from a lot of fatigue in the day, or they're pregnant, or that is 100% my recommendation for them to do and to really incorporate having it every single day, that consistency is what pays off. So, Laurieann, do you want to talk about the Vitality Snow Cones? They're so cute. Yeah, so these are fun. I mean, I know it's not necessarily summer right now, but like you talk about a really fun way to just liven up things for the kids without putting, you know, toxic um, sugar, sugar, sugar. Inside of them, you can use, you know, honey or agave nectar or something else, um, combined with the flavors of, of true plant, uh, plant medicine. <laughs> um, so just a fun thing, even for the holidays. 
Um, this is one of my favorites that I'm actually gonna try. I was so excited when we were making this class to find this recipe. Um, but hot, hot apple cider. I feel like this is something that when you buy it from the store, it has so much other things in it. Um, and I feel, yeah, so this is a really wonderful way to just make the house smell incredible um, and also fill your cup with something really good for your, your body and your soul. Um, we're gonna send all the slides to out, so don't you worry. Yeah. Thank you, so I think so Thieves Tea, this is me every day at the end of my day. I make this for my husband and myself. And I use a Pyrex because I just like to measure. And at this point, I have it down to a fun art of exactly how much we like. But I will put a generous amount of honey. I would say it's about two tablespoons since it's for both of us. And this is two cups. And then I put two drops of Thieves and four drops of lemon. So essentially, I'm doubling the recipe. But just for the ease of knowing, it's really one mug gets a tablespoon of honey, one drop of thieves and two drops of lemon. And then you want to add warm water. You don't want it to be scorching, boiling, because anytime we're adding too much heat to our oils, it's breaking down their beneficial properties. So you don't, you know, I actually have on my kettle a way to choose a lower temperature, which is quite nice. If you don't have that, just let it cool a little bit and then you can add it and then it's ready to drink. So you add the honey, then the essential oils, super important to do it in that order, then the warm water, stir it. And we kind of call this our hike in a mic. During these times, like as we're in winter and there's like a lot of sickness going on, um, I have this every day. And if I feel like a scratchy throat or I'm not feeling a bit more run down twice a day. If you're making it for a child, by the way, you're gonna halve it. So as an example, I would make a normal cup of thieves, which would be my one cup. And then what I would do is add another cup of water, or I could pour out half of the thieves tea into a sippy cup or whatever they're drinking, and then add another half that's just water. And of course, if they're over one, you can just add some more honey to make it sweeter. If they're under one, you can still give it, but you're gonna use <clears throat> agave or maple syrup. You just can't use the honey. It's okay. So, um, I've been making like lattes with it with um, uh, macadamia milk. Oh, nice. Um, or almond milk, um, oat milk, and any of them. They all are amazing. Um, and my kids love it that way too. Um, it feels like, I don't know, fall. Yeah. Another way that I also give my kids is we have um, tea bags that are like caffeine free. Um, I'll have like a vanilla one. And I'll just put a drop of thieves on that and actually steep it in some water, add some honey, and then give them like a little bit of like vanilla oat milk. They love it. So I know that they're actually getting their thieves in it too, which is so nice. And they'll ask me for that, which is cool. Okay, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. Um, so you can also add oils into like when you're blending for smoothies to pour it on an acai bowl or into your yogurt. Um, I know that this one, Juvaflex, is definitely one of the stronger ones, as they recommend. And Jade mentioned earlier, using a Q-tip. Um, a toothpick, not a Q-tip. I'm sorry. A okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need some ninja right now. Clearly, for my brain. Um, yeah, not a, not a, not a, um, not that. So anyway, and you blend it, um, and then you would pour it over. Um, Einkorn is Young Living actually has its own. Um, line of products you'll see in here. There's a, a flower mix uh, with this special kind of flower. Um, I'm going to send a video in the follow up. We'll send a, a follow up uh, email, and in that will be a video kind of explaining why it's so special and the DNA structure and how it's better for you and things. Um, but for now, just know that it tastes amazing and it's very versatile. And there's pancake mix and spaghetti and um, flour on your own, which you can do anything with, and obviously in this one too. Um, yeah, the, their food line is honestly really, really yummy. They have pancake and waffle mixes and most gluten-free people can handle their iron corn just because it's, it's, got, it's like a 14 chromosome flour. So it's really interesting. It's an ancient grain and yeah, Lorianne, you can share more about that. And by the way, a quick little thing. So when we say like a toothpick, you would literally take the toothpick and just dip it into the hole of your essential oil. And remember too, that there's the other tip or trick that if you're at the end of your oil, you can always just put the cap on like this, squeeze, you don't turn it. So you just have it in place and pull and pop the lid right off. 
And this way you can get those last few drops of your essential oil. So that's always an easy way to get them out. Um, awesome, thank you, Jade. So this, this recipe was kind of fun. I know that we've bought these organic ones at Costco before, but I think just making your own feels, feels better sometimes, right? So- And the house will smell amazing. Yes, um, so, and it's great gluten-free snack, right? And kind of a dessert uh, for the kids. So um, pretty simple recipe. Um, I think it's kind of funny, it's 225 degrees, but that's what it said. So we're gonna maybe try this for Thanksgiving with the family. Um, this is uh, the Part of that, by the way, Lorianne, is because it's a dehydrating. Um, that's why it's a lower temperature, but it's for longer time. Yeah. So yeah. usually- I'm getting into the kitchen newly, so bear with me. <laughs> her, her husband cooks and he's yeah. very good at it, yeah. So yeah, he makes like the peppermint brownies and we would do the lavender farm events. Amazing. I would even say like, I have made brownies many times. I don't know what you're doing, but there's like some magic going into your brownies. Yeah. So he's a really good cook. <laughs> so in this picture too, you can see some of the other products, like the food products. There is the Ningxia berry syrup. Um, my younger daughter loves that stuff, loves. And then there is the iron corn, there's cereal. There is the pancake and waffle mix. There's a whole bunch of stuff and um, it's really, really delicious. Yeah. The pancake mix, the kids call them creepy pancakes, but they love them because <laughs> my daughter read it. She thought it's a creepy pancake. <laughs> Cute. Um, guacamole. Um, we didn't give you instructions, but we gave you all the ingredients. But um, and the citrus fresh, which is a blend um, of citrus oils from that is actually particular to Young Living. Um, and then lime go incredible in it. Um, and you, yeah. And it, you can also add um, one of the herb oils if you wanted, just depending on your taste buds or black pepper and so forth. My husband gets creative sometimes with this more so than me. <laughs> yeah, I love to actually just put plain lime in mine. And that's the other cool thing when you're making things like guacamole and oftentimes even marinades for foods if you don't have like a lemon or a lime but you have a, the essential oil you can absolutely replace it so I've made guacamole with lime essential oil it's delicious and I mean my kids absolutely love that as well so this recipe is honey lavender almonds and there's a really nice smorgasbord there of foods and things um this one's just like a sweeter nicer alternative so getting kind of fancy. It's a quarter cup of almonds here. You've got a drop of lavender, a cup of honey and salt. And then you would do again, you know, in a saucepan and kind of let that coat the almonds. So that's also really just a fun thing to add a whole different flavor to cheeses and crackers. And, you know, if you're going to have people over or even, I love meals like that, where there's just a few, um, you know, things that you can, finger foods that you can pick. I literally, one of my daughters will come to me and say, mom, can you please make me a smorgasbord? It's her best thing. And I'll make her like some nuts and those, you know, apricots and a few little things. And we both know like it's all healthy things. So, yeah. And variety. And these I was thinking too, like could be a really fun little, um, you know, holiday gift or something to take with, you know, wine or whatever you are going to someone's home. Um, Okay, this was really neat. I've never tried this, but these Vitality pumpkin seeds. Um, so any opportunity to cook or put thieves in something, I jump on. <laughs> so I saw it, um, but it's really fun. I don't know if you remember, like, like anyway, growing up, there's like the Cracker Jacks, which was totally bad. It had corn syrup and fruit source and hydrogenated oil, I'm sure. Um, but it was really fun and it had a toy in it. Well, you can make your own version of that, um, you know, with popcorn and these seeds um, and just something fun, fun for the holidays and beyond. Here it was a ball game theme. I know that there's another recipe too with, it's called like thieves popcorn and mm -hmm. without even adding the nuts or the seeds. And from what I understand, you just put like a drop of thieves into the oil before you add the popcorn seeds. And it's supposedly incredible. I've like so many people have actually made that and talk about it all the time. <laughs> and I have yet to try that because we, I will make popcorn a lot at home. But yeah, I hear rave reviews about that. I also know of making like your own version of kettle corn, which is healthy and you can just use like some monk fruit and then a little bit of salt. So that's really a nice, healthier way to offer it as like a, a treat for you and the kids. So, 
exactly so it's sweet and salty yep and it's it's really healthy so here is a salad dressing that salad looks amazing to me so this is an avocado lime dressing and so again you would just follow that recipe for all the things that you'd need and you would just add five drops of lime into that actual dressing and then pour that over so that's that one um, this is really fun. My uncle actually um, taught me to do this when he was going through his cancer, um, when he got diagnosed with cancer a few years ago, he's now fully recovered. Um, he had started using essential oils um, and frankincense in particular. And he, when I asked him um, well, how he was using it, he's like, oh, I put it in my salad dressing. <laughs> like he, uh, intuitively, that's just how he decided to have it because he had tried other ways and they weren't as appealing to him, like just, you know, on the, on the roof of the mouth. So anyway, um, sacred frank in particular. A note on that, there is a frankincense vitality. Um, there is not a sacred frankincense vitality. However, it is still frankincense and it is, is still um, safe. And he has done that. Yeah, and so I wanted to talk about that as well. There's something called the GRASS list, which stands for generally regarded as safe. And um, there are a bunch of oils that are listed on there that are Young Living oils. And the reason that they're not labeled and don't have the vitality is because honestly, each time you, we want to create a vitality label, it needs to go through. It's, it's very, very costly and it's quite a lengthy process. But when you actually learn what the oils are and when you take any of our essential oils and you, you peel back the label, it explains exactly what the... Like, each thing that was in, if it's a blend, especially, each thing that's going into this. Um, and when you break it down, something like even purification as an example, like when you actually read through it, there's nothing really in that that isn't safe for internal use, but they just haven't yet created that label. So they went with the ones that they knew that people would use and would be obvious, you know, the, the most, like the most important ones, but there is definitely this, grass list and it's important to know that and to learn that and feel safe and comfortable to use it as well internally I mean okay caprese salad when we talk about this one this is one of our family favorite things to eat here and um, my husband loves basil loves I mean he will literally or basil he will literally like just take a leaf and you know eat it <laughs> he's like he loves it on everything and anything so this is kind of the same recipe idea. These are the small little uh, mozzarella balls and the little mini tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes. And what they've done is they've added three drops of basil vitality and three drops of lemon, and then used that as part of like a dressing to kind of sprinkle all over with the olive oil and the garlic and things like that. So just a really nice way to spruce up kind of a, a, a flavorless-ish salad so yeah that's going to definitely add some fun flavors this one is super cool so you can actually you could do this with spaghetti too it's just about adding it into the spaghetti sauce or making your own spaghetti sauce um and yeah but super fun one i don't know we do on the weekends sometimes i'll let the kids make their own organic pizzas where we do the ingredients and stuff but i had never thought to add um add oil into the actual pasta sauce um, or pizza sauce so we're going to give this a try um, but in this case, they did oregano and um, basil. And you can also do fennel vitality. I didn't highlight that one. Um, I've never tried, okay. have you tried that one. I've never tried fennel. Fennel, I have tried it. It's really, really good also to increase milk supply. So oh. I, I have tried it just to know what it tastes like with yeah. helping other moms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's a great one as well. Very cool. I did see the fennel or caraway, like some of those you can actually, and I didn't include it in here because there's just so many things you can do. We'd be here for all night, but um, where you can bake it in breads and infuse it in breads if you're making your homemade breads and such too, which is neat. I saw that, that looked really nice, that caraway recipe actually, yeah. yeah. So this one is a citrusy ginger marinade. Um, all of our marinades, a lot of them are, have got like an olive oil, it's got a, a base basically and you'd add soy sauce some grated onion juice of one lemon and here you can add two drops of orange two drops of lemon one drop of ginger and you'd combine all of those pour it over the chicken 
and then you cover and refrigerate one to four hours. And of course, you're going to discard it when you're done. So all of our marinades are going to follow a similar idea. And for those of you who don't like soy sauce, because you don't want, you know, the stuff that's in soy sauce, it's not the best, you can definitely use the cocoa aminos instead. So we do that in my house. We don't really, we actually don't have soy sauce at home. So that's a nice alternative. Nice. Also, you could do any of these on veggies um, as well. Like if you don't want to do it on meat, um, on asparagus or on zucchinis or squashes um, and so forth, and just do like a medley of vegetables with a marinade is also super yummy. Um, this one in particular is a Mediterranean one. Um, you can also kind of do these and soak your own olives if you want to make marinated olives and like flavored olives. Um, we've experimented with that. Um, sometimes better than others if I add too much. <laughs> it's too strong. Um, Honey lime, we'll go through these a little bit quickly, but they will be in the follow-up email, but just to show you the variety of what you literally can do, um, you know, a favorite um, thing that I have noticed a lot in the aisles in the grocery stores and restaurants is like orange chicken. Well, it can be super not so great for you, um, but this is a, way, a great way to find an alternative. Um, and like Jade said, you could substitute cocoa aminos or tamari, depending on your um, preferences. So let's get to desserts because it's the best for last. <laughs> So peppermint brownies, these are such a crowd pleaser. And the best part is you do not need to be a Martha Stewart for this. So you can honestly buy any premix that you are happy with. And of course, gluten-free if you want to go for that option. And it is so simple. It's kind of insane. And yet everybody's always like, what, how did you do that? How did you get them to taste so yummy? So um, this one, you would add three drops of peppermint vitality to your wet ingredients. And those of you who want to go all out and Martha Stewart this, go ahead, you know, do your normal recipe that you would to actually make the brownie mix. And you just want to add the essential oil to the wet ingredients before you mix it into the dry. And that's, that's that. So this is super fun. My family tradition of ours, my mom, since like her great, great grandma has made pies, homemade pumpkin and homemade from scratch um, apple. Um, it's like her thing once a year. <laughs> Anyhow, so and you can also use essential oils. We're going to try it. We'll let you know how it goes. Um, I'm going to send the recipe to you. It's very, very long, um, at least for the slide. It's long, so it'll come in the email. Um, but happy baking. You'll have it soon. So these ones are a fun way to get kids to enjoy Ningxia. I know we're going into winter, but I don't know about your guys' kids. Mine Maybe. will still ask for, for yeah, they'll ask for um ice cream still as a dessert. So this is a really nice alternative and these are Ningxia pops. So you can do two ounces, which is essentially one of the Ningxia red packets, add a cup of ice, one cup of freshly squeezed orange juice and then coconut water if you want to. You can add like a splash of that and just, you know, cute popsicle sticks, pop those in and you're done, you're good to go. Most kids really, really love the flavor. So there's lots of variations of this recipe. I think most people, like the Ningxia together with orange juice, but you can totally be creative. My husband's favorite is actually Ningxia with pineapple juice. I think he's nuts. I think it's sweet as heck, but he loves it. And that's how he likes to enjoy it. So you could do that as well. Um, you can see that there's also like cut up berries and stuff. You can get kind of cutesy and creative and, and freeze some of those in the popsicle, which is fun and makes it look cute. So this um, is what I was sharing with you earlier about the Ningxia red and having it in a different form to make it easier to possibly digest, but to get the benefits. These are so fantastic if you have little ones who you might be giving gummy vitamins to or vitamins because those gummies stick to their teeth, really not great for them. So it's a pretty simple recipe. It definitely takes a little bit of prep work, but so well worth it because they'll last you a while. And um, you can see here, you just need to find agar agar powder, which most health food stores have. It's a gelatin alternative. Um, you can add four teaspoons of honey to sweeten it, grapefruit and lime essential oils. And then all you need is the silicone molds and the ningxia of course. So there's the whole recipe there. And again, we'll share it so that you can like follow step by step. You'd want to let them cool in the fridge and then pop them out and have, you know, one a day. Most kids are like, oh, so I want another one. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> most of the kids that's the biggest issue uh, um so in, in looking up things and experimenting and um searching things for this 
for this class, I found this really fun quiz on the blog for, so I'm going to share it, um, but it's really neat. It takes you through, it's like 10 questions. It's super simple, um, but it takes you through and kind of points you to what your vitality oil is. Um, so it's a really nice place to start if you, you know, you've just gotten your kit and you haven't really ventured into vitality oils, um, could, could speak to you. So then the resources, um, Lorianne based a lot of this presentation on stuff that exists from Young Living, which is so helpful. They really are really great about education. So they have a Facebook group it's at Young Living Essential Oils. Um, they also have an Instagram, which is at Young Living. And um, there's also this blog, which you just saw. That's where the quiz is coming from as well. And a lot of these really pretty images and such. It's called the Lavender Life blog. And you can also look for that just with youngliving.com forward slash blog. So there's some great ideas if you want to check that out. I do go to that blog and I'll, there's a search box. If there's any topic I want about oils and I'll search there first. And usually nine times out of 10, I'll get like three or four informative articles of things I didn't even realize I wanted to know in addition. It's really helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and here's other resources, which is just like our team resources. And we have a Facebook group called Essentially Speaking, and then a, our bigger one called Hello Essentials, which is global. There's WhatsApp, so you should be in ours called Hello Essentials. No, ours is called Essentially Speaking. Sorry, just kind of overlaps all the time. And then there's our Instagram. So there is one at essentially.speaking. Um, I also do one for South Africa, which is, you know, Hello Essential South Africa as well, if you want to watch that, it's same kind of information. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we hope that you learned something about our vitality oils and how to use them internally.